House of Representatives has called on the Ministry of Aviation and Aerospace to hold the issuance of airstrip licenses to private individuals and organizations, including revoking licenses already granted, such as the one recently approved for the Living Faith Church, led by Bishop David Oyedepo. This decision raised by Rep. Suleiman Abubakar Gumi during a plenary session follows concerns that private airstrip could pose security risk. Rep. Gumi emphasized that unmonitored airstrips could potentially facilitate illegal activities, including the importation of firearms and drugs, thus escalating threats like insurgency and banditry. This motion gained traction after Minister Festus Keamo confirmed the recent airstrip approval for Oedipo's Church in Otaogun State. In his motion, Gumi referenced a 2014 incident involving a private jet associated with a religious leader which was seized in South Africa while transporting $9.3 million in cash. He argued that limiting private airstrip licenses is crucial for national security, urging that only state-supervised facilities handle air traffic to prevent misuse. The House has now taxed its committees on aviation and legislative compliance to ensure these measures are implemented. Okay, so um, this is not limited to just living faith church, mm. right? It's for private individuals, even though some people are thinking there's something under the carpet regarding this. Since the case study, the um, pastor that was mentioned, or the church that was mentioned is Living Faith Church. You're a pastor. I'd like to get your thoughts on this one. <laughs> even though I'm not expecting you to be biased anyway. Exactly. Okay. Um, is that a setup for me? No, 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 pastor. no. I can't set you All up. All right. So, um, basically, I think the comments backing the decision of the reps member to raise that um, argument during the plenary section um, was very straightforward. I remember in 2014, like he clearly stated, when a clergy was involved in something like this, and um, it, 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 it took the, the news for a long time, and <sighs> that was a bad scene. Because, of course, religious leaders are revered. Yes. And, of course, getting to that peak in your religious career where you have been respected across the globe, then we don't expect to hear some certain things about you again. But, unfortunately, whether it was true, whether it was an allegation, whether it was verified, or whether it was a setup, we have not been able to clear all of that till date. But we know that such a news came up at a certain time in 2014. So right now, if the reps has said these are our reasons for revoking the license of the private airstrip, then it's something we should look into. I will look at it from two angles. First of all, what are the measures put in place by the Ministry of Aviation when it has to do with monitoring? Monitoring is essential. Even in the supervised airstrips, you have a lot of offenses going on that are uncovered up till today. A lot of offenses going on that are still covered and we are yet to uncover them. Because people go through a lot of, you know, how things work most times. People have to go through this and that and that. They are always having to pay this, do that, do that. Funny things happen. And when it now comes to a private airstrip where nobody is watching, then there's a challenge. The news headline captures the Living Faith Church because, of course, it's going to cause a stir and, and perhaps everybody will want to look at the news and you say, oh, Bishop David Oyedepo is on the news. So let's see what's happening again. Uh. And um, that's actually what is going on. But like what we, we saw, private, not just Bishop David Oyedepo, not just the Living Faith Church, but private licenses are to be revoked and to be, they're, they're supposed to stop issuance of private licenses. So if the Ministry of Aviation can assure us that there's a possibility of ensuring that the proper monitoring is done, regardless of um, state-owned or private-owned, then we can go ahead with that. And the monitoring process has to be unbiased. 
Okay, that's monitoring now, but not revoking the license. Yes, if, if, if you want to... Be, the reason why they are revoking the license is because he is stating that there is little or no monitoring for private airstrips, meaning that a lot of illegal activities can take place. Now, if you want the illegal activities to be stalled, what do you do? Do you revoke the private airstrips or do you put in place proper monitoring? You know, it's just like what we have in the education sector. You have private universities, you have state universities. In as much as we have private universities, a lot of things will happen there that are not ultimately controlled by the, by the state. But there are monitoring procedures put in place in education that ensures that every education um, educational institution is striving and working in, con in consonance with the, um, the guidelines. So if something like that can be done, then fine. We don't need to revoke that the license. That means you're against revoking I'm the not, licenses. I'm not, I'm not against yeah, revoking. That's what it looks like. I'm only providing the Why solution. Why are you trying to be diplomatic here? I'm, exactly. Yeah, you use the right you, word. You, I'm providing the solution. You hit the, the point already. already. I'm providing the solution. Don't worry. Nobody's thinking you're being biased. <laughs> yeah, no, no, Just no, no. speak your mind. Exactly. You, I'm speaking you don't, my mind. You, you don't want the licenses to be revoked. And you're saying instead of that, why don't we just put, put in Put in proper place. monitoring oh, okay. structure. But... The truth has been said by the reps man. He says if proper monitoring is not there, that's his concern. And I'm working with his concern. His concern says no monitoring. No monitoring will amount to the, um, the to, to fostering illegal activities. Probably, the the private airstrip given to the Living Faith Church, for instance, is not going to be used by Bishop David Oyedepo alone. It's going to be used by some of his members, some people who you may not be able to uh, ascertain the source of their their wealth or perhaps the kind of businesses they do or they may even not be involved in illegal businesses it could be a friend that could just say transport this thing for me now through on a private airstrip and mm. it's just a setup and once the news blows out they'll say the private airstrip that was approved for bishop and it's living faith church but one would wonder involved. since they said the the report said this happened in 2014 what happened all the while why was this not recommended at that time, especially at that time when that incident happened? Why now? And why making reference to the Living Faith Church after it was announced during one of his services that, uh, about the license and all of that? Why is it that it's that time that they decided to revoke licenses of private individuals, making reference to something that happened in 2014? Exactly. Ten years that, that, ago. That is why I stood my ground where I, I started from because what has gone down is going to cause a national stare. Mm. Whether we like it or not, Bishop David Oedipo is revered and holds the influence over a large population in Nigeria and in Africa and of course the rest of the world. So, where was the reps when the whole decision process, approval of airstrip does not happen in one day. It doesn't happen in one day. So, of course, it took a process. Where were they when this procedure was going on? Why did they not call the Minister of Aviation to order and say, appear before the reps and tell us? Of course, before these things are approved, you don't just approve things, even universities and all, private varsities, you don't just approve them. It goes through presidency. It goes through the the legislature as well. They are aware of this approval process. Why did they, not first, that did they not stall this process from the beginning if they knew that they had concerns like this? They had to wait until the approval has been done. And that's why I'm saying this is going to cause a national stare. Revoking that has. license is going to cause a, nat a national stare. So what do you have to do to forestall that process? You go ahead and put in place proper monitoring. But the question is all the while, why, why was there no um, why, why don't we have proper monitoring in the first place? But that place? is Nigeria for you. In the first place, why don't we have... And it's not a case of um, it's not being implemented because, you know, sometimes people will say, oh, don't worry, we have these policies on the ground. It's just that they're not being implemented. For reps to be talking about it, it means that it's probably not even there. Why are there no provisions for proper monitoring and you're issuing licenses all these years? Look, let me tell you, the whole system is faulty. Even the 2014 incidents that was mentioned didn't happen in a private airstrip. It was in a state-owned... It's not a private airstrip that that happened. 
So it shows goes along with the fact that even the state-owned procedures, the monitoring is faulty. That's why I said that's Nigeria for you. Nigeria does not, we are not proactive. We wait until there are problems ahead of us and then we want to start making the news and making fights here and there. Nigeria has to be proactive, especially the leadership. So what I suggest to the reps is, look, you should call in the Ministry of Aviation, set up a proper monitoring team. If we are still having a, lag behind, a lagging behind that sat 10 years ago, up till 2024, that means nothing really has been done about that. It therefore means that our call should go to the reps and the Ministry of Aviation to ensure that they put in place proper monitoring. If you have your monitoring team in all the private airstrips, they will check. Now, what kind of monitoring do you use? Of course, there will be surveillance, use of the surveillance cameras and all. These are all going to aid a transparent monitoring process. No, that's another course, thing, transparent yes. monitoring process. So we need, one of the things we need is a transparent monitoring. Oedipo holds influence, but should not get away with anything he does because he holds influence. So when you are sending somebody to a private airstrip, for instance, owned by maybe one city president or one former politician or one oil mongol, you don't just send somebody there and the person is belittled by the influence of the person. You send a transparent monitoring team unbiased. If possible, there should be a constant rotation of the monitoring team. No monitoring team is permanent or st stagnant in a particular airstrip. Before you know, you cannot say when your transfer will come. So maybe if you have done a shady deal with one person, expecting that you'll be able to stand there and pull the, the deal through. They'll just move you. They'll move you. Transparent processes have to be upheld in our country. That's the truth about it. All right. Uh, I like the fact that you mentioned that because it doesn't just end at monitoring. Like what you said earlier, oh, this is Nigeria. I don't know why people usually say that. Oh, the, yeah, Nigeria, this is Nigeria. the Nigerian factor is at is in play <laughs> here and all of that. So even if we're having policies on ground, even if you want to talk about implementation of these policies, you also need to think about the monitor that would monitor exactly. the, the monitoring team. <laughs>